a quick disclaimer. When you hear this sound, that is when a time skip is happening. If it's relevant to the plot on how long it takes and it's not said inside of the dialogue itself, I will specifically mention that. This is simply for story flow and so that it sounds a lot better in audio form versus reading it. So, without further ado, I hope you enjoy. A Quiet Rune Scribe Written by Blue Dragon 64 Chapter 1 The last thing I remember was the feeling of falling and then black. I don't remember what killed me. All I do know is that I was walking home on a nice day with no clouds, and at maybe three or four in the afternoon, I was walking and just tripped on a small rock, maybe. And I fell, and nothing. Just black. If I'm going to start talking to myself, I might as well say my name. It's Kevin. Not sure that matters now. After I fell, it's just been this blackness. Although maybe void is a better term for this place. I can't feel anything or see. I'm just here. It's weird as I'm not mad or sad. I feel like I should be, but I'm not. How long have I been here anyway? Is this it? Okay. What do I know? I am Kevin Leary Forrester. I'm 21, I was born in 2001 in the state of Ohio in Columbus City, no job as I lost my last one to budget cuts last month, no living family, not many friends, and no pets. <sighs> what else? My main hobbies are cartoons, reading bad fanfiction, and games. And that's it. <sighs> what else do I say? Well, fuck. Is this really it? Literally just a black void in my own head. Why am I not panicking or sad? Can I even get sad? So, what do I do? Do I repent for my sins or scream and make a wish? Can I move? Kind of feels like I'm moving now, but nothing has changed. What is that? Light? As my mind comes to awareness, I still see black. Oh no, not this again. But as I keep looking, I see it's not all black. There's some very faint light. I try to move closer, only I feel different now. I feel warm and very wet. My mind now catching up to my body. Where am I? And suddenly I feel whatever I'm inside move, swaying back and forth slightly as it does. Wait. Am I in someone's womb although now that i think about it it seems right i did die and then that void and light so rebirth probably as whoever i'm in keeps moving i feel them stop after some time and wherever we are it's much brighter but that's all the difference i can see i can hear some muffled noise from the outside but i can't make anything out it's all just noise after a few moments, I feel my mother move and lay down, I think. Then a quick burst of movement. The water around me is flooding away and the walls squeezing me as I push forward. After a while, I see bright light as I leave my new mother. I can't see well for a while. The light around me is hazy and blurred. But after a while, my new eyes start to adjust to the light, and the first thing I can make out of the wall is the room I'm in. Its color is a soft white much like unfired clay bricks, as I get my bearings and look around the room. As I look around, the first thing that catch my eye is a pink and magenta color. After focusing for a moment, I make out the shapes. Oh, what the fuck? In front of me is a pony, a type of pony I recognize. Well, I know where I am now. As I take in more of my surroundings, I see the pony in front of me as a unicorn mare. She is wearing what looks like a doctor's coat, although it stops at her mid-back and doesn't seem to cover her belly, only the chest and back. Looking around, I see another pony, this one not wearing anything. An earth pony mare with a dark brown coat and green mane. They seem to be talking, but I don't recognize the language, and the sounds don't have any meaning to me. 
Continuing to look around the room, I mean, it's pretty sparse. Only having some cushions, a bed, a small desk, and a cradle that I'm in. Laying on my side, I look up as I hear the conversation between the two mares get louder. I don't know the words, but neither looks happy. The doctor keeps trying to get the other mare to sign the clipboard she's holding in her magic. I get distracted by that as I see a light pink field seep from her horn and vanish, reappearing near her clipboard. My attention going back to their conversation is it's now more of a shouting match. Before I can continue, the brown mare pushes the door to the room, opens it, and slams it behind her, leaving only me and the doctor in the room. She seems to deflate slightly before looking at me, and seeing me staring back at her, she grins a bit and approaches me. After a moment, she seems to cast a spell on me before finding a piece of paper and casting a spell on it. This seems to form words, although I can't read them as I don't think it's English. Although it's hard to make out letters out from the light shining through it. After reading the words, her mood seems to lift some, now with a big smile. She picks me up and moves me out of the room and down a hallway with several dozen other doors, all with numbers I don't understand. After going through another door, we come to a quiet room full of cradles with sleeping foals. She puts me down in one and leaves, and after a few moments of nothing, I decide to just sleep like the others, and after a few minutes, I drift to sleep. It's been about a week or so since I was born, and things are interesting so far, and I've stayed in what I presume is a hospital, and that time not too much has happened. I've been fed and changed at least twice a day, but not much beyond that. Today, something new though. As one of the nurses picks me up and we move to the front of the hospital, two doors leading outside. At the front desk, she hands me off to a group of ponies. Mostly mares, but some stallions, and a few foals they seem to be gathering to go with them. As she passes me to an older unicorn mare, she also gives her an envelope. I think my documents? Well, looks like I found who I'm living with. After a day or two of not seeing the brown pony, who I think was my mother, it didn't take long to realize that I was given away. I don't know why, nor do I really care. In my past life, I grew up living with my uncle and aunts, never meeting my birth parents. They died in a car crash from what I was told. The older looking mare picked me up in her magic as her group started to leave, me with them. As the door closed behind us, I got my first good look around outside. It looks like midday as I look around. I see three to six story buildings around us. Seems like we're in a city, and a fairly big one from the looks of it. Many ponies moving up and down the streets with some carts and carriages. As our group moved through the busy city streets, I see more ponies, mostly unicorns, some pegasi, and a few earth ponies. All walking, going about their days, some carrying things. After 20 minutes or so, we turn off the busy street and down one with less traffic. We pass a few restaurants with ponies eating at tables as we pass by. After some more time, we reach a large building, three stories high, with a fairly large front lawn, along with a few garden-growing herbs and small crops. As we enter the main doors, we come up to a fairly large room with a large staircase going up to the second and third floors. We turn down a hallway and into a room much like the hospital. Around two dozen cradles, mostly empty, sitting in the room. The older mare holding me put me down before leaving. It's been a few weeks since I've been at the orphanage. In that time, I've learned quite a lot. A few words, although I'm not sure what they mean. I have a decent idea, but I'm not certain. My legs have gained enough strength to walk. A few of my new caretakers look surprised, but not overly so. I learned why soon when one of the other foals that came with me in the hospital started walking a week later, although that does make sense as ponies in my last life could walk as soon after birth. I've decided that I should probably not try speaking. I don't want too much attention. This world has magic, so I don't actually know if they have encountered someone who's reincarnated before so I may try speaking when one of the other foals that came with me does. Another thing that seems to be working in my favor is that they don't seem to think it's odd that I can walk already. I think it's because I'm an earth pony. Out of all the ponies that are here, I'm the only one, most being unicorn foals and a few pegasus ones. Even though we can't have been born that far apart, maybe a few days at most, I'm already bigger than all of them. And from what I've seen, earth ponies seem bigger than the others, pegasi being the smallest. So me walking before the others doesn't seem to raise any red flags. At this point, I've seen several rooms, 
or one, there was even a mirror on the wall. So I finally got a good look at myself. My coat was a deep brown, even darker than my mother's. My mane and tail were green, much like hers, but much like my coat, it too was a deeper color. A deep forest green, and my eyes being a bright lit green, almost like emeralds. And I've been outside a few times, although always under close watch. I even enjoyed playing around as a kid again without having the stress over work and rent. It's been nice, but I'm starting to get bored. I'll have to find a way to entertain myself. It's my first birthday today. I was given some small toys and some drawing supplies as gifts. Even better news, I was given a name. It's Shade Evergreen. I decided to take that name as it seems fitting with how I look. In other news, I've learned a lot of the language. I still can't say I'm fluent in it, but I can now hold a conversation. Even better is that not a few weeks ago, one of the other fools said their first word a week ago. So I started to do the same. Now a lot of my caretakers try to teach me words. Mostly simple ones, but it's still helping a lot in learning the language. One thing I found out is that the orphanage has a library in it. While watching me, one of the caretakers took me there to return books. It's not big, but still fairly large, holding a hundred or so books. In the past year, I've been able to learn a few written words, although not many. I think I will try to learn more if I can, although I shouldn't push my luck too much. In the past year, I had a few close calls with the caretakers. Speaking of the caretakers, I've learned some of their names. The main one being the name of the orphanage head, the older unicorn who took me in here. Her name is Margie Limestone. Her coat is sandstone in color, and her mane a dark brown, although not as dark as my coat, and her eyes are a dark blue. I've learned the names of a few other ponies, but mostly I haven't. The orphanage houses around a few hundred or so orphans, so they have quite a few staff members. Another interesting thing is eating. After we turn 10 months old, they start to feed us solid food, mostly soft stuff, some bread, fruit, and a few other plants that humans don't eat often, or at all, like daisies and hay. At first, I was a bit apprehensive, but after trying them, they aren't that bad. Although, I'm definitely starting to miss meat. It's my second birthday today. I'm two now, and some things have changed. The big one being I have magic now. A month or so ago, I picked something up with only one hoof. A small rock. I had been trying to do so for a while now, practically a few times a week since I turned one. A few of the other foals my age also started doing it. The only the unicorns, not Pegasi. So I think my practice has paid off some. I think a unicorn's horn has a lot to do with how they use magic to hold things so early in life because even when they are only holding something with their hoof, their horn still glows a small bit. My best guess is that their horn is compensating for the weak magic of their age. In the show, most earth ponies are farmers or bakers, stuff like that, something that requires contact with their work, but it's pretty obvious that they still have magic, just not a horn. But that still doesn't explain why unicorns have more magic than other ponies. My best guess is that unicorns simply use their magic to make the direct effect more often than other types of ponies. A good example is that most Earth ponies use their bodies more, so their magic probably strengthens them. Whereas a Pegasus uses it only to fly, as their wings aren't really big enough for them to fly, yet they still do. On top of that, some ponies also seem to have more magic than others. The only reason I care to think of for it was simply practice. From what I remember the show, most unicorns that are strong in magic grow up using it more than others. After deciding to train my magic, my best idea to do so is to simply hold something for as long as I can right now. I can only hold something that doesn't weigh much, a few small pebbles and twigs from the yard during playtime. So my current plan is to find the maximum weight I can hold and do so for as long as I can before my magic runs out, and then do that as much as I can. I'm five now, and in the past two years I've made a lot of progress. The main changes I've had were preschool. We get taught by a teacher that the orphanage brings in, and we have a room for classes. Right now we're mostly learning to read, so not much for me as I already know how to read. But there are some words that I don't know, so it's rounding out my knowledge. Probably the best part is the small bookshelf which I read through. 
mostly simple kid books, but some still had some things to learn. By far the best part about growing some was the alone time. Before I could only do things like practice for a short amount of time, now we are for the most part left to our own devices for most of the day. Because of this I had a lot more time to practice than in the past two years. The length of time and weight that I can hold things has been increasing. I've even learned to hold things without touching them. It's only a few inches from my body, but after practicing it seems to be increasing in range as I push my limits. After a while, I decided to name this effect simply My Telekinetic Field, or TF for short. With some practice, I can now hold a few pounds of stone without using my own strength, and a few ounces at most when floating them without contact. Another thing I've noticed is I can hold smaller and lighter things much longer now. It may just be my growth, but even then I don't think it would be this strong. So I believe my training is working. The last thing I've noticed is that I've taken up running mostly in games with other foals to try and stay fit. I don't know if exercise will help me with my magic capacity at all, but it's worth a try. And keeping in shape will help me in general. My current plans are to try and get access to the main library and learn more about magic in general. It's my eighth birthday today, and the past few years have been interesting. Let's start with school. In my past life, I lived in America. And the grades there went from preschool and kindergarten from 4 to 6, elementary schools from 7 to 11, middle school from 12 to 14, and high school from 15 to 18. After we left preschool at 6, we started something like middle school which lasted until we were 10. It's pretty similar, mostly tests and spelling and grammar. The biggest difference I found was numbers. We were only taught basic math at 8 earlier this year. And even then, only basic addition and subtraction, not even multiplication. Furthermore, many other ponies my age are having a hard time doing it. For a human, even if a kid struggles with math, they would still be better by this age. I don't think ponies are dumber or something like that. As far as I've seen in all other aspects, they are comparable to humans, although smaller. So it's really just math seems to be a difficulty for them. My theory is that a pony's mind is less geared towards math than a human's. Although I don't know the reason, I just can't see another possibility. In other news, I've gotten to explore the city more, and finally learned what city I'm in. Which, to my shock, turned out to be Cantalot of all places to be born. I'm not really sure if that's lucky or not. Good news is, I think my idea to keep a low profile was a good one. Mostly because of my proximity to a certain sun pony. Speaking of her, I got to see her raise the sun not long ago during the summer sun celebration. Me and the other foals were taken to see it, and I can tell you right now she's definitely got presentation of nothing else. Another thing I've learned is dates like my birthday, April 5th. That's another odd thing. The calendar has the same names for months, and the year is also 365 days, just like Earth. I may have to look into that later, but for now, it's only an interesting oddity. I also learned it's the year 988, so I'll be 20 when canon starts. In terms of my own progress, my training continues as normal. I'm now able to lift rocks weighing 60 to 70 pounds, and able to float a 1 to 2 pound rock close to me, although it gets harder the further weight it is. I can lift maybe half a pound roughly 8 ounces 5 or 6 feet away from me, or things like pebbles and twigs with some effort. I can pick them up almost 10 feet away. I've kept up with running too, mostly to train my endurance. I also started drawing again. In my past life, it was more of a hobby of mine that I stopped doing because I never had enough time for it. This turned out to be a good choice of a hobby because around a year ago, I finally got access to the main library. In the library, most books were about careers and jobs, which does make sense. But two books did catch my interest, both about magic. The first being about what magic is, and the second is about runes and spells. First, what is magic? Well, I didn't give clear answers like I'd hoped, but I did learn that magic is a form of energy that is everywhere in the world, as far as they can tell. And that using magic requires two things, will and math. Will to move things and form your magic, and math to give it instructions. Unicorns do this by memorizing a spell matrix in their mind and then pushing their magic out of their horns to power the spells. 
In contrast, earth ponies and pegasi that use their magic, they're more passive for strength to fly and to hold objects. The other book went into more in depth about a spell's matrix, and the runic spells use the same math formulas to do the same things in different ways. A good example the book gave was the heating spell, a simple spell that only heats something until warm. The math basically just tells the spell what the base temperature is and to go higher. The more complex the spell and the more drastic the effect means you need to keep the spell matrix and math firmly in your mind and then you need enough magic to power it. This is part of the reason not many unicorns learn more than the basic spells and go to magic schools to learn anything more. And also why only unicorns use this type of magic. If an earth pony or pegasus did try this method, they wouldn't be able to push the spell out of their bodies where it's been formed. This being the most widely used type of magic, but there's also runic magic. It's not that different from normal spellcasting, and despite its name, it seems to not use any language, only numbers and symbols as far as I can tell. In fact, the two branches of magic are almost identical, the spell matrix and runic matrix being interchangeable with each other. The big difference being that a spell matrix is formed in the mind, and a runic one is formed outside the body using magic to try it. What interests me the most about runic magic is that you don't need a horn to cast them. You just need to push magic through the tip of your hoof and draw the matrix out. And if you're good enough at it, you can even form the matrix all at once outside of your body. That's actually the difference between a novice and journeyman runic caster. A master is some pony who can form more than one at a single time. Now, as you imagine, I was pretty excited that I could actually do magic. I read the entire book that day, and the next day I went to my room with a small rock and a book I was able to borrow with the promise to be careful with my attempts. At first, I was surprised they would give an eight-year-old a book on spells, but the only three spells in the book are one for the heating, another for cooling, and a weak lifting spell. On top of that, when a spell metric fails or is done incorrectly, the magic will just dissipate into its surroundings. With weak spells, this isn't that dangerous, but with more powerful spells, the uncontrolled magic can be dangerous. This being one of the main reasons most don't use this magic. Why spend your time learning a difficult and sometimes dangerous branch of magic when you can just pay a unicorn to do it for you? And as for why other ponies don't use runes to make enchanted items, it's the same because the process of making an enchanted item is the same if you're using runic magic versus spellcasting. After making it to my room, the room itself is rather simple. A bed, two shelves, a desk, and a small chest. I moved to sit on my bed and try the most basic step, drawing with magic. I try to concentrate my magic in the front left of my hoof, my hoof gaining a small emerald green shine on one end, and I focus and move it to the left. As I do so, a line of deep green magic is left in the air. I smile at this and attempt to draw out the heating spell. And after several attempts, I draw two rough circles of green light, one inside the other as I keep my concentration. I write the correct numbers inside, and as I draw the last number, I move the small rock I brought with me and put it into the circle, and feed the runes my magic. The matrix flashes slightly as the rocks start to heat up, and after a minute or two, I've used half my mana and cut my connection to the runes, the matrix dissolving into motes of light before disappearing. As I reach out to touch the rock, I feel the warmth coming off of it as the stone is hot to the touch. It worked. As a large smile spread across my muzzle, I see a faint light coming from my side. Huh? As I turn, I see the light coming from my flank. Before, there's a flash as I blink the white spots from my eyes and I turn to my flank, excited to see what's on it. As I do, I see the form of a stone tablet with a runic matrix on it. The stone is a deep dark color, much like lava rock, and the runes don't seem to have any meaning that I can tell. Just random numbers and a few symbols. After seeing my new cutie mark, I decide to practice more runes before going to bed. It's now my 11th birthday. It's been three years since I got my cutie mark. As a gift, I was given a book on some more complex spells after getting my cutie mark. The head mayor told me that I could only practice basic spells and only with the supervision of a caretaker. So, I'm excited to try a few more complex ones. A few things I've learned that are important. One, most ponies consider 15 to be an adult, which seemed a little weird, 
The ponies in my past life were adults at 5 or 6 and only lived for 25 to 30. And I've gotten to meet some ponies here that are way older. One in their 70s. And ponies also seem to mature a bit faster than humans. Another thing I was told was to start thinking about a career and was given a small book where apprenticeships I could take for a job. There were quite a few, mostly crafting and production jobs, so I'll have to give it some thought as when I turn 15, I'll have to leave the orphanage. One thing of note is guilds, many of them for a specific craft like blacksmithing or tailoring. As for my training, it's been going well. I can now lift almost 200 pounds, with my TK field now floating 10 pounds close to me, and almost a pound around 20 feet away. My magic reserves are still growing along with my control over my magic. At this point, I think my reserves are larger than even most unicorns my age. Most of them not practicing much magic, and some don't even practice spells at all. I have also gotten better at drawing, and practicing more after I learned that the better my runes are drawn, the less magic they take for the spell. Using runes has also helped me train how fast my magic refills, the rune for the heating spell that I could only keep up for a few minutes two years ago, I can now keep up indefinitely. My body has also kept growing. I'm now almost as tall as some of the adult pegasi, and still growing. That, and I've kept up exercising, so I'm in good health. A few weeks after my 11th birthday, I finally decided on apprenticeship after looking through the books that they gave me, and I found one for a librarian for the city. The library is the second largest library in Equestria, only behind the Royal Library. The job itself isn't anything grand, but its pay is pretty decent, as not many younger ponies want to work there. The only real requirements are I need to start the job before the age of 13, and I need to stay until I'm 15. The main reason I chose this job is because it gives me plenty of time to research, as I'm allowed to read on my break and before and after my shift. I also get free access to the library, and can check out as many books as I like, as long as I take them back every month. On top of that, I also get a rent-free room. Nothing fancy, but still, my own space. After learning all this, I decided to go for this one. It took a week for them to send me a letter saying I was accepted, and after that, I start my new job tomorrow. Normally, I would break a reading like this up in two parts simply because it's easier for me, but I figured that doing it all in one go would probably be the best since this is both a epilogue and a chapter one, in a sense, because we go over the start and then we actually get into what the quote-unquote story is. I believe I am about chapter 33 at this current moment, and it's been an interesting read so far, and I'm pretty sure you guys will like it. Also, the author of this, Blue Dragon 64 has listened to my nose, nose, nose reading, which is really funny to me, because when I message them, they're like, oh, shoot, uh, I've, I've listened to some of your readings before, so that's that's really cool. It, the small freaking fandom, huh? <laughs> what else is cool on my wonderful Patreons? Thank you, Bounds, Kindness, Chase, The Master, Dreamless, Portal, Hyperlink, Jason, HKH4, AKA Texture, Lord High, Nine Game, Macario, Pony Pony Entertainment, Starlight Blaze, Rain Flicker, and Tyler Perry. My Tier 2 is Captain Blue, Shadow, Kiak, Misty, Animated Ghost, DGMX2000, Elemental Wolf, H1 Wolfkin, Potato 20, Mr. Crazy Deacon, Solar Comet, 212 Trooper, Mackenzie, McColas, Nocturne, Papa Lennon, Redeemer of Dark, Solus Eclipse, Sword, Brother and Mordred, RD Bryant, Rihanna Dragon Wolf, and Steel Spark. Ugh, there are too many of you guys. A large thank you to my previous Titan tiers, Star Guardian, Danish Dash, Maverick, and User1842. And a big thank you to the requester of this series, Bis Eclipse. And a large thank you to Silent Titan. I appreciate your guys' support so freaking much, and it means a ton to me. Anyways, this has been Firehearth. Have a wonderful day.